This is Steve with Entering Into Space on a rainy Sunday afternoon after uh, getting back into Nina. So a brief imaging session last night to get out the big hooch and the PC and the table and the chair and all the programs and everything. Uh, wanted to see how everything was going and I actually got some clear skies cleared up to shoot a little target last night. Actually the same target. Needed a little bright target boost. Been trying to get some faint stuff here and it's been uh, pretty rough. So I did a little... Uh, imaging session on the soul nebula and so the scenario is i think we've all faced it i shot six hours of data last night i got 1.9 hours to keep so i wanted to show you kind of a hybrid method of processing some data when you don't have much to work with and between pixin site and photoshop so what i've done is i've already uh stacked and aligned and combined everything and uh in an ha but if you're shooting one shot color, you know, just follow right along. It's pretty much the same process. And then I've also drizzled it. Let's get into this. Let me shrink me down. Bye bye. And so here's the image. This is the drizzle integration. Like I said, it's 1.9 hours uh, shot with the six inch Newtonian Skywatcher uh, six inch. Did I say six inch? No. It's the Skywatcher eight inch, 200p. I do have a six inch. You know, we got a pretty good image for 1.9 hours, but it's kind of washed out. We've got a lot of noise in here. And we do have some structure detail, which is pretty cool. You know, it's a bright target. It's a good safe target, something to shoot to make give you the feel goods. Uh, but let's process this thing. And we're going to start out here in Pixel and Sight. First thing I want to do is, you know, I, I really didn't have a lot of stacking artifacts, but I'm going to go up here to process geometry and dynamic crop. And I'm just going to crop it in a little bit, hit the reset tool there. I'm drag this bar in just around here like this and since I don't have any other data we can go ahead and hit the check mark and kill the tool uh, next thing I want to do is try to clean up some of this background enhance some of the contrast here and we're gonna come in here process background modelization and dynamic background extraction Wow um, click the image to connect the tool. We're going to start with a tolerance of 1.5. We're not going to generate samples. We are just going to place them. Uh, and I've got a default. It's defaulting right now to uh, a size of 31. So let's, let's put a box in here. That's not bad. The main thing with putting these boxes is making sure that you get them around the edges. That's pretty crucial. And try to stay away I wouldn't want to put that box like right in here into some of that nebulosity I want to stay off the nebulosity as much as possible and also I, I like to always make sure if at all possible to get a sample point in the corners and if you're wondering how I am moving around on the image I am uh, holding my spacebar down and then clicking the image and then moving the mouse like that uh, so let's put a few more. Let's try to clean this image up. Like I said, 1.9 hours isn't a lot. And also this is shot with the Antalia 3 nanometer HA filter. So gonna have some really small stars and gonna have some pretty good contrast in the signal. Most of this image is nebulosity, as you can tell, with the Sol Nebula. Um, but that's pretty cool. You know, I'm not, there's no rare to really, we might be able to put one there. Uh, but I think that's good. I think that's enough samples. Like I said, most of this is nebulosity and I don't want to put any samples on top of that. So down here in the target correction, I'm going to come to, uh, actually I've got to come down here and hit division. And then I'm going to say discard the background model because I don't want to see it. And let's hit the check mark. Let's see what we got going on here reset the screen transfer function that we got here hit the nuclear button yeah I like it uh, cool 
So we're not going to run that again. I think that did a good enough job. So we can go ahead and delete that tool. Let's minimize the new one here. This is DDE. Push it up here. Let's go ahead and get rid of the old version. Open this one back up. And I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to run some easy scripts right now. Next step, I want to try to sharpen up some of this data, some of the stars. Uh, it's pretty good, you know, but I did have some clouds come through and trying to save as much data as I could. I may have got a little funky star in there. Uh, I may have got a little slightly out of focus image in there, so, but that's fine. We're going to sharpen this thing up some. We're going to draw a preview box right up here in this icon that has nothing but it says new preview mode. So we've drawn a box here. We can minimize the image. We're gonna come up here into scripts. We're gonna to go to the easy process suite. And if you haven't uh, downloaded these, definitely check out my video on using these uh, because uh, I really do use these quite a bit. And we're gonna to come to easy decon. And I found that, uh, that says new, no view selected. So we're gonna do the drop down list here and choose the main image which is Drizzle Integration DVE. I found Easy Decon works really well if you keep it in moderation. And the first step in the Easy Decon process here or script is to create a new process star mask. So just click there and it does it for you. I'm gonna create a star mask. All right, so we're almost done with the star mask. So it's gonna punch a hole in all the stars. Oh, there it goes. And you can see it is creating a mask. There. Uh, so we'll go back to Drizzle integration and we need to do a background mask now. So we'll click that. And settings across the board for ECD con uh, in the setup phase is pretty much default. All right, our background mask is created. And so we're gonna come over here to deconvolution. We've done our masking and we want to generate a PSF. And this could take a little while depending on the size of your image uh, because it creates a PSF, which is a synthetic star from every star in the image. So you can see down here, it says PSF fitting 1,422 stars. Uh, you know, if I'm shooting wide field right here, that could be, you know, 23,000 stars. And yeah, go take a nap. So it did it pretty quick while I was jibber jabbering. Uh, so now we've got everything created that we need. We got a star mask, our background mask, and our PSF. Back to the main image here. Let's do this. Uh, oops. We're going to do this drop down list here. We're going to choose that preview that we made. All right, so here it is. Uh, and I like to start out pretty low in my iterations. Um, I've had I've had different data sets only allow me to get down to maybe two or three iterations. Uh, and then some I've had to boost them. Never been up in the hundreds though. Let's just start out with 10. Uh, the pixel math is iterations, really what this does is it needs to be a little stronger than your decon iterations because basically what it does is like global darkening. It, it minimizes the dark halos around the stars. So we're going to run easy decon evaluation and it's, it's just like you uh, experience in Pixinsight. site it's just doing the decon on the preview it's not doing it to the image so uh let's roll in here check it out yeah let's sharpen it up some i think we could probably let's boost that up to like 20 six let's run it again and every time it runs it, it's going to create a new tab up here. So that was decon run one run. Yeah, we're definitely getting sharper now. You can see that is the original. It's sharpened. You can definitely tell not a lot of data here, but I like it. I like that. Uh, I think I'm going to accept that. And now that I'm happy with that, I'm going to come down here and hit run easy decon. Okay, the decon is done. Cool. 
Let's go ahead and uh, right click on this preview and hit delete. Minimize the image. And of course, decon leaves you all these masks left over to mess. And I would suggest that you just stack them, highlight them, and delete selected icons. Whoops. Because if you don't, you'll have a lot to choose from in pixel math. Remember that. Okay, next automated script is going up here to scripts. Easy processing suite, easy denoise. I don't know how I live without this. I mean, I honestly don't. Um, I could do a preview, you know, have a preview box and look at it. Uh, the, really the only settings that I might change is the number of iterations over here in TGB noise or the TGB settings. I may drop that or increase that, but honestly, I don't touch anything. I don't touch anything in MMT. This thing is just like, put your image in and hit run. That's basically what it is. So that's what we're going to do. Oh, but yeah, anyway, that takes a little while. Uh, wow. Um, so, yeah, so we're done. But man, is that smooth? That is so smooth. Oh my god. I mean, that's amazing. Right? Right? Okay. Uh, but we are still, if I hit that folk, still linear. We still need to stretch it. Uh, so, what I want to do here is in the screen transfer function that has drizzle integration dbe called up i'm gonna point right here at this k band right here and i'm just gonna roll the mouse wheel back and you see it starts to separate these two carrots here so this is going to be like your mid tones and this is your uh your black tones or your darker tones here so it kind of works the same as as a like a level stretch if i push this out see how it's i bring this back in, see if I push it out, it gets darker. Uh, so let's reset it. Let's roll it back. Reset the tool. Actually, hit the screen transfer. There you go. Roll the mouse wheel back. And we're going to take these dark tones here. We're just going to push this in. Give yourself a little contrast right here in the image real time. Brighten up. Brighten it up just a bit. I'm just going to use the screen transfer function to stretch this data. So I like that. Let's open up the histogram transformation tool. Let's take this instance, put it on the bottom right here. You see when it's a grayscale image like this, you'll see the, uh, the curve that it puts into it. When you hit F12, we're going to take all that information. We're going to drop it on the image just like that. And now we're stretched. Minimize the tool. <laughs> okay. Very cool. Um, I like it, and I'm going to do one more process here in PixInsight, and then we're going to move over to Photoshop, and the process I'm going to do is the new Star Exterminator. Yeah, no more Star Net, Star Exterminator. And yes, when I hit this, you'll see that I'm still using a trial version, but I think I'm going to get it. I think it's worth it. it especially with images like this that have their shot with a reflector, and you've got these diffraction spikes. It does pretty good. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull the stars out of this image. I want to make sure that generate star image is checked. I've done the latest AI version. I can select it here if I want, but it's the uh, version six. And we're going to drop it on and pull our stars out. Yeah. Okay. Let's check it out. Stars are out. Let's minimize this. It's, it names it drizzle integration DBE stars, which is pretty cool. You just know that's the stars Let's minimize the tool. Uh, wow, star spikes are gone, All right? I mean, I see a couple little residual things, but man, StarNet would not have done that. There's a couple in here. StarNet would have left all the star spikes in there. That's mega clean, worth the money. I think it's like 60 bucks, I think. And for those of you who don't know, if you come over here, let me drag this over so you can see it. So this is the uh, Russell Croman astrophotography. Dude's got some killer stuff here. But if you come in here to uh, resources and star exterminator, then you can do the free trial. And what it does is it gives you a link. Let's, uh, let's get rid of this. 
and you'll come over here to resources, you'll come to updates, you'll go to manage repositories, and you'll actually see it's right here. You'll click add, you'll drop that link in here, you click OK. Yeah, 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 yeah. You'll click OK, you'll back out of that, and then you'll come back to resources, updates, check for updates, and it'll check here, and it'll tell you that you have an update. And then right now it doesn't say it has updates because I've already updated it. Uh, but then once you're done with that, uh, installing it, then you need to restart Pixdite. And then you've got uh, the Star Exterminator. That's how most of these plugins work. And it, what it does is it shows up here in process. It shows up either in mass generation, Star Exterminator, or um, object recognition, Star Exterminator. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, okay. Enough of that. So we've got the stars out. We've got a really cool image here. Let's come up here to uh, File, Save As, and we are going to save it as General Integration DBE, but we want to save it as a TIFF. Click Save. Okay. I want to make sure it's a 16-bit. Click OK to that. Okay. Let's minimize that image. Let's just push it down here. Now we're going to go into Photoshop, open up Photoshop, or right, we're going to open the file. Um, I go find it. Actually, it's in my new hard drive. Go eight, Solar Nebula. There it is, right there. Open it up. And something that you could uh, let me know. I don't know. I don't know. I guess I'm asking a question. When you change it over to a 16-bit, you get a really bright, washed-out image. You really have to do some work to kind of uh, work on these values here. So, I'm not sure why that does that. Maybe it has something to do with going from a 32-bit to a 16-bit. Uh, but the way I fix that is I come up here to Image Mode, and I change that over to an RGB. And this little eyedropper tool right here, I'm going to right-click on it. I'm going to choose Color Sampler. I come down here in that little dark spot and you see my background values are in the 50s. I want them to be in the mid 30s. Uh, so I'm going to come here to image adjustment levels. You can see I'm mega off the left hand side here. So I'm just going to push those levels down. Uh, yeah, high 30s, mid 30s, 37. Let's carry just a little bit more. 36. Look OK. Cool. Awesome. All right, so let's duplicate this layer. Drag it down, drag it over this little plus mark right here. And what's the first thing I want to do? I think really what I want to do is some uh, sharpening of some of these areas in here, right? I want to sharpen some of these areas up. Uh, actually, no, what I want to do is I want to do noise reduction. Let's do some mega noise reduction. So you can tell We've pulled the stars out. Whoa. As you can see, we've got pretty, still got some grain in here. The uh, easy denoise did really good, but let's really, because our nose, pro, our nose, my nose profile, our noise profile uh, is going to be enhanced because we don't have a lot of data here. But let's, let's take advantage of some of the uh, noise reduction tools that we have here. And this is a pretty cool little process. We, we've got the top. These are duplicate layers, right? They're exactly the same. That was different. We're going to come to the top up here. We're going to open up filter. Camera raw filter. Love this. <laughs> All right. And I'm going to come in here to the detail tab, which I'm already in here. And I'm going to crank that noise reduction. I got an image get like butter smooth, right? Accept that. So let's zoom in here and look. Yeah, man, look at that noise reduction. But we don't really want to apply all that noise reduction to some of our, our higher signal areas that we want to sharpen, you know, or leaves sharpen. Let's check that background too. Yeah, I like it. So let's, let's get crazy. Let's go back in here and do it one more time. You want to? I don't want Let's maybe hit it one more time. A little bit more noise reduction. 
And what's cool is we can do that because we don't have stars in here, right? We're not really... Because if you apply a lot of noise reduction to an image that has stars in it, your stars are going to go... So we're going to be like little dumbbells. So we could get really aggressive with this. So we've got a super smooth image here, but we want to protect these highlights. We don't, we don't want to apply a lot of noise reduction to them just yet. Uh, so what we're going to do here is click on the image. We're going to come down here and click a layer mask. And we're going to apply a layer mask to this. Right? We're going to come down to the background image. Remember, this is the sharper image without all the noise reduction. We're going to hit Control A, Control C. I'm going to point at the um, the layer mask. <laughs> Hold the Alt key and we click into it. We just dove into it like that. And then we hit Control V to paste the image, right? And then Control I to invert the image. So everything that's black is not going to receive any noise reduction and everything that's white will. So let's tweak that some by coming up here to image adjustment levels. We're going to pull this black slider over and you see those higher signal to noise ratio portions of this nebula are getting darker. We can bring this white in to really get crazy aggressive with that noise reduction. Let's bring that black in here. So everything that's white is going to receive all that noise reduction we did. Everything that's gray receives you know, a portion of it. And these, see these highlight areas here where we really want to salvage that detail. See how solid black they are? I actually darken them up some. Just click OK to that. Right click on the image and say Merge Down. So, you see we're back to having a nice sharp detail here. Um, really got a great, a lot of great noise reduction here. So let's come in here to select, deselect. And let's do another process here. We're going to duplicate. Let's open up the um, let's go to filter, camera raw filter. Let's give this thing a little punch. We're going to go here to the basics and we're going to increase the dehaze just a little bit. We're going to increase the clarity and the texture. Boom. Boom, see that? Kind of drop some of those shadows down. All right, all right. Let's push that down. Let's duplicate it again. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna sharpen up and highlight some of these really cool features here using the high pass filter. So with the top layer selected, remember we just duplicated, that's all we've done. Top layer selected, we're gonna come over here to filter we're going to come down to other high pass high pass and we're going to adjust the slider until we start to see these details pop up we don't we don't want to see this because we don't want to see that because it's almost like looking at the image you see that we want to really just focus on the details just the higher contrastier details so somewhere in there i like that Click OK. <clears throat> and we want to change the blending mode to, we can either go overlay, soft light, or hard light. I'm going to choose hard light because that's really going to give me that boost. Eh, uh, what do you think? One of these two. Look at Vivid. Vivid's like, pa -cha. Yeah, let's go to hard light. So again, we're going to click a layer mask onto this, right? And we want to point at the layer mask here and hit control I because we're going to invert the layer mask. So now it doesn't look like we've done anything, but our foreground paintbrush is white. We're going to come over here to our paintbrush tool. We're going to leave our opacity and our flow fairly aggressive. Opacity at 60 ish percent flow. Boost that up to maybe 80%. So 60, 80. And we're just going to come in here to these areas here. We're using our bracket tools to increase and decrease the size of our brush. And we're just going to brush over some of these highlights. See it darkens and brightens at the same time. Look at that. Did you see that? And obviously this would look a whole lot better with about 20 more hours of data. 
but just under two hours, I'm pretty happy. I'm just gonna work on some of these areas of contrast. See that, how that just highlighted that area there? Bitchin, bitchin. All right, and this little bubble dude over here, I always like to hit him. And then this, uh, this little dragon back detail. You just see how these details just pop right out. See that there? Pix and Sight will do this in Enhanced Dark Structure. It'll also do this in um, Local Histogram Equalization. But just something about coming in here and really being selective and painting these things in has uh, always been an astro turn on for me. Oops. Yep. Yeah. So, all right. So if you want to come back, we can turn it on and off. You see? Subtle. Let's right click on this and hit select a mask. We want a feather what we did here out just a little bit awesome right click on it and say merge down let's duplicate it one more time we're going to come back in here to filter we're going to come to sharpen we're going to go to smart sharpen we can click here we can just look and see when you move it around it kind of takes the sharpening effect off is it is it really helping that much let's boost it zoom in on it just a little bit yeah yeah look okay to that and again we can do a layer mask and hit control I to invert the layer mask and we can be pretty selective with where we want that sharpening to be which is pretty much just right in here I know I know the YouTube conversion is not letting you see this because it's that subtle I'm just showing you the motions. Okay. Ooh, let's hit that little guy right there. Cool. Uh, let's right click and merge that down. So we got a pretty awesome image. Let's see, file, save. Okay. And we can minimize it. Let's come back in here to Photoshop. So this is our old one. Let's leave it right here. Um, and let's rename this underscore old. Old. So this is our original one. Let's go here into file, open. Um, the D the drizzle integration DVE that we just did. So you can see. Uh, let's do a comparison here. So this is the old one. This is the one that we just came out of Photoshop. Uh, a pretty dramatic difference, I would say. In uh, scroll right in here to this pretty cool area let's drag and drop this over and sync them up yeah got some good noise reduction still got great detail um i'm i'm digging it okay <clears throat> so something i learned when i originally did this image is that star exterminator does a really good job on the stars really good job almost too good a job so let's zoom in here on these stars and let's look you see it really grabbed the star it grabbed the star spike but also got some of this residual star glow you can really see it evident around some of these smaller stars okay you can see it in here let's clean that up one two okay uh, and what we're going to do here is come over to our list of stuff here, our little bag of tricks. We're going to open up Star Mask. Uh, we've got everything pretty much set to normal here. Scale 11, noise threshold, just over 3. 
So maybe this is 11. I'm not going to do contours because I just want to mask the whole star and the truncation is about 80%. So let's drag and drop. Okay, we have a star mask and you can tell that it's pretty small. And my school of thought on these settings is I would rather have a mask like this that I can increase if I want to the diameter <clears throat> or ready the morphology of the star then it's easier to do that than try to decrease it uh, so let's minimize the tool so let's open up morphological transformation right and morphological transformation is not just for um, minimizing the stars it's also for increasing the stars so erosion minimizes and dilation expands uh, so I've got it set to five elements. I've got it set uh, here to a round shape as much as possible. So let's just drag, drop it on. And I don't know if you could tell, but in YouTube land there, the stars got bigger, right? Okay. And one thing we can do here is make sure they are expanded to the same size. Okay, and we're gonna roll in here. Let's roll in here to these stars. Some of this brighter set of stars right here. Take that tab, move it over here so that the other image is equal. And let's drag and drop on top here. And if you just click on the image, the top image, you can see we're pretty good. It's not like the stars below are expanding out or the edges, so we've got a good star mask. So let's drag it over here. Let's drop it on. Okay. And we want to right click on the image, come down here to mask and say invert mask. So now our stars are protected. You can see this part of the star, it's good when I just zoomed in on there, is protected, but this residual kind of speckling and noise is not protected. Okay, so let's right click on the image, say mask and click show mask. The mask is still applied because the bar is brown. I get brown, red, I don't know. Anyway, so let's come up here and do a preview. Let's just do a preview over these stars. And we're gonna come in here to uh, process. We're gonna come down to noise reduction and TGBD noise, I already got it open. <laughs> uh, got some pretty aggressive settings. Let's, let's run it at default. So I'm gonna boost that smoothness to about 50%, strength about 50%, and make sure that the edge protection is minimized. You don't wanna increase the edge protection because then it wouldn't even come anywhere close to the star. You wanna make sure that that's fairly minimized. And then let's just drag it, drop it over here on this preview. See what it's done. So let's look. Let's hit uh, Control, Shift, and Z before, after. You see, it's it's it hasn't totally gotten rid of it, but it's greatly minimized that, right? And added a level of uh, noise reduction to the stars. So I like it. Okay, we're done. We have cleaned up the stars. Right click, say delete the preview. Right click and say mask and remove mask. Cool. So these are our stars. Let's check them out. You know, there's still some of that residual glow, but it's not as obnoxious. We've reduced it quite a bit. Um, if we wanted to come back in here and put the star mask back on, You know, we could let's do another hey another halo, another preview or halo. <coughs> see, we've got a lot of residual around some of these bigger stars here, but see we've really cleaned up these smaller stars. We could open up our curves and do a real time preview here. Just kinda Oops, we forgot to invert the mask. 
So if we wanted to, we could come in here, do a real-time preview. Actually, look into the preview. Do a real-time preview of it. And then check and see. See, we're right there. It's actually applying a little bit of star reduction. How about there? We really tighten those stars up, which is cool. And you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to actually apply that because I was in a preview. So I've applied it. I like it. Let's come back in here to the image. Drag and drop. See that just did a little bit of star reduction as well. All right, so let's get rid of this preview. Let's right click on it and say remove mask. Okay, minimize the picture here. So let's put the stars back in. Got a great looking image. All right, and we can open up pixel math. That's how we're gonna put them back in. We're going to leave use single RGPK expression checked. Open up the expression editor. This was from last time, so let's just make sure we're doing it right. So we got Drizzle Integration DBE, which is right here. And then we don't want to do that star mask because that's the one we made. We're going to do plus Drizzle Integration DBE stars. That's what uh, Star Exterminator created for us. Click OK. Make sure that is set to replace target. Drag and drop. Bam. So we've got an awesome looking image and we've got some stars that have actually received some cleaning, some teeth cleaning, and a little bit of star reduction in that process that we just did. And I don't know about you, I say this all the time, that's a badass image. I mean, for 1.9 hours. Uh, and that was the thing, that's the reason I wanna show you this because a lot of us, man, we start doing this and we get into it and we got an okay night and the next thing you know, We've got shit nights for the next three weeks and you're just like so sick of it. You want to process something. So we have taken very little data. Granted, it was with a mono camera where you're going to get a little more detail, but we've taken very little data and we made it look what I think is uh, pretty fantastic. If I do say so myself. Uh, so we could probably do some local histogram equalization on this just to kind of give us a little more depth. And we can create a clone. We can take that clone, apply it to the image. So we're protecting our background. Let's right click on the image, say mask, show mask. Let's do a preview. Just preview a really cool area. There's a reason why I want to take an image. I want to just really focus on that at 800 millimeters. Uh, let's open up local histogram equalization and Let's push this down. We've got it. Let's set it at default. Default's pretty weird. I always have this mount about 30%. I like to push the kernel radius up to about just a little over 200%. Let's drag and out on the preview. See what happens. Cool. Let's go back one step. Hey, okay, you can see it's not uber obvious, but it's subtle. And it really did enhance. It really made some of the stuff pop out here. Okay. Uh, I think I'm done. Done with you guys. Uh, let's remove that mask. Let's minimize this. One more thing we could do just to make this pop. No masks on it. Let's open up a real-time preview here. We're going to pin some areas down. And what we do is we've got this... Uh, our cursor set in the um, well, pop up the readout mode so when we drag it over here it's giving us some readout backgrounds but you can also see where it is on the curves line here all oh, right there so what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring that area down or put a pin put a marker right there let's do a, actually we did a real-time preview let's pull this down just a little bit Let's kill the real-time preview. Let's do it again. Good grief. Tighten up. All right, so right here, so we're gonna pull it down. There we go. And the thing about it is, is the, the 
contrast from this part of the signal to this part of the signal is pretty quick. You know, this slope is pretty quick. So if we come and drag this up right about there, where we want to lift, this is a weird looking little S curve. As you can tell, what we've done essentially is really pin those darks down and really made that central core of this nebula pop. So let's, uh, let's accept it by hitting the square button here. Yeah, that's pretty, uh, it's pretty ferocious. I like it. So, you know, just a little over two hours of data. We've got nice, clean stars. We've got the star spikes back in there. Got a pretty smooth image. All right. Look at how sharp our stars are. We've got some nice, sharp, crisp areas on uh, some of these structural details. But our background is uh, pretty stinking smooth. Okay. Yeah. So I think this video was another one of those things is like I used to ask myself, why do you still need Photoshop if you have PixInsight? Uh, yeah, I'm sure, you know, there's a lot of people out there that process completely in PixInsight and never move over, but I still do. I still find some of those tools that I just showed you pretty handy uh, to, to enhance your images. And uh, so, yeah, just a quick video on processing this data that I got last night now that I'm back in the Nina saddle again. Uh, so until next time, what do I say? Clear skies and clear minds.